there. <clears throat> Wanted to come to you today to give you a few little tips as you get started with your air fryer. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit so you can see a little bit more what I'm talking about. Let me tilt my camera angle down. Okay, so of course you have your wonderful deluxe air fryer. Up to you if you want to leave the sticker on or take it off. I've just left mine on because in case I take it to my shows, I want everybody to know that that's hot. But honestly, it doesn't get that hot. Uh, I'll just leave it right here on the counter. I have marble. It doesn't hurt the surface. I've uh, you know, seen different posts in the Facebook group that it could, but it doesn't. It doesn't get hot at all. And you can actually, I could just do use it right there. Uh, so I'm going to, again, big tips. Uh, next, you have to plug it in every time you want to use it because if you plug it in, this light is going to start flashing. And that light will not go off when you're through using the air fryer because it just constantly flashes. So that's why you want to unplug it. You always want to plug it into an out, I mean, like an actual outlet, not an extension cord or one of the power strips. That's important because of the wattage that comes out of the air fryer, okay? It even has a hot sticker or hot surface on top. Again, you can take it off if you want. I've just left mine on. Up to you. Uh, another little tip that this is not air fryer related, but I love it. I bought one of these little things. They're called glider, and I cut it to, I got it, Cooks in Innovation, Innovations. And I cut it to size so that my air fryer just fits right on it. And I can slide it in and out, move it around real easy as those to picking it up. Now, when I first got the air fryer, you know, I like to keep my counter kind of clean and neat. So I had it, I put a little spot over here on my shelf. And I had it kept it there. So every time I wanted to use it, I had to carry it over to here. And because this is the closest outlet. And then I thought, well, I'm using it a lot. I think I'll leave it on the counter. So I had it over in the cor far corner. And then I was using it so much more where I don't have an outlet. And I thought, heck with it. I'm just going to leave it here where I can plug it in and unplug it and just use it all the time because I do. So now that you know that, those are my tips for that. Okay, next we have, of course, the light is flashing, but as I turn, so we have air fry, which is preset to 25 minutes and 400 degrees. That's just a preset. I can hit yes for air fry and change the minutes up or down. Okay, so let's cancel that. Or I could go to bake. Bake is preset for 15 minutes at 350 degrees. Again, hit that button, change the time, all I want. Let me cancel, start again. Roast is 375. Rotisserie is 400. And the rotisserie, it, it kind of makes it turn around, you know, like when you're doing the... Uh, kebabs or using the spit, you know, for the rotisserie or the basket. And then you have reheat, that's 350 for five minutes, and dehydrate. Now, dehydrate is 130 degrees, and it runs, it, that four is not minutes, that's hours, because when you dehydrate, it can be anywhere from four to six to eight hours, and then it shuts off. So, uh, just know that. Uh, next... Let me cancel. Okay, if I want to reset set it for something else, let's say I want to have something that I have to bake like at 250, then I can actually, you know, set my time, set my temperature, move it around, up or down, and then it's good to go. But just know that it all works the same. There's a fan up here in the top. The fan blows. It's Think of it as a convection, like a convection oven. Um, that's all it does. It just circulates the, the food. So everything browns from the top. There is no heating melt element on the bottom, so you won't have that. Okay, so let's look at light. You see the lights on in here? That light only stays on for what, maybe 30 seconds and then it goes off. It doesn't stay on all the time. Now while you are using it, whatever, bake, heat, air fry, you can turn the light on if you want to see what's in there or open the door and it comes back on again, okay? 
So now you get two of these racks that come with it. You can purchase extras if you want. I actually have a third rack that, because I sometimes do, especially when I do the dehydrate, I wanted to do it on three racks. So these, people I've seen have kind of complained about using them to, to cleaning them, but a little tip is you want to spray them with oil. Um, don't use Pam. You want to don't want to use you want to use like our kitchen spritzer that has its own. You know what's in it. No additives or a paper towel with some oil that will help your foods to keep from sticking. But let me reach right in here in my drawer that I bought some of these and I got like two hundred of them for like six dollars. These little air fryer parchment papers and they have the holes in them so that the air flow. Uh, constantly. You definitely don't want to put something in here that's going to restrict air, air flow. So I like to use these if I have foods that are kind of sticky, uh, breaded foods that I've breaded myself. Uh, so that's another tip. Um, I also love the, let me grab real quick here. This is a Norwex spiry sponge and I love it for cleaning. It really gets in there. Or a kitchen brush. You can use that. I just put them in the dishwasher. These are perfectly fine to put in the dishwasher. This is your bottom tray, which is catches the oil and the grease and the crumbs and all that stuff. This is not dishwasher safe. You want to hand wash that. Again, you can get extra of these on the supply form. Uh, you can order those. And you also have this tray. Notice it has this little lip here. This tray is to go on the very top, not to be cooked on. It protects the fan. So you can see the fan up there. I don't think you can see it very well, but it is not to be used for cooking. It is used to keep foods from flashing up there too much on the fan, okay? Notice the light went out, so we don't have that. Uh, another little tip that I want to share with you is you can take, okay, sometimes when you wash it, see, if you can see, let me tilt that down a little bit and get it a little closer here. If you can see this little, I can't see if I'm getting it, this is out. Sometimes it does. All you have to do is just run your finger across it. And it kind of goes back in there. See how smooth that is now? So now my door opens and closes fine. Occasionally when you wash it good, that little gasket will kind of come loose. But no worries, it, goes, it just slides back in there. Now, when you are cleaning, sometimes, like, well, let's say you're cooking bacon, and that bacon's dripping, or chicken wings, or something like that. Um, it does, it will drip on your cover. So, that would be another reason to get an extra one of these, just to kind of keep that there as you're pulling your trays out. It'll drip right on there, and you can just set it there to transfer. I use that sometimes. I also just have a big sheet pan, or sometimes I'll just use a paper plate there and just kind of use that to catch the excess grease. Little tip there, okay? Also, when you're cleaning this, you can take this off. It's got these little buttons here that you just push and they open and close and it comes off. So I can clean this better, get in there better, and I could probably show you a little bit more about that fan that I was talking about. Now mine needs a good cleaning and I really need to, I really probably should do better at cleaning this every single time. And I promise I'm going to air fryer gods. <laughs> so you put that back in there. This is for cleaning purposes. So when you're cleaning this, occasionally you'll see some steam or something, or maybe even something might drip in there. You can actually clean this inside and out, but you don't, you can actually, if you, if you get water and run it through there, it drips right out the bottom. So that's what I'll do. Sometimes I'll just, I don't submerge it, but I'll wash it really good. I don't worry if any water drips down in there. You can see that little thing starting to come out. All I have to do is push it back in. That's that same I was just showing you. And just let it sit there to drain and dry. And it just fits right back in there. Same thing. Push those little buttons in. 
kind of like how my storm door works and kind of jiggle it around till you get them to get back in place and there you go so that's a little bit about the air fryer that i wanted to share with you uh, there are certain uh, pans that we have or anything that you have you don't want to use aluminum foil in here uh, for whatever reason i'm not sure it does fly around because that air flows even when i use these sheets and I put food in on them, these will kind of fly around a little bit because of that air flow. So just be aware of that. One of my favorite products to use when I am baking something that is going to be really greasy and I don't need the air flow so much is the small, cook, the small uh, stoneware bar pan. So that fits in there good, but still allows for the air flow. When you are air frying, baking, reheating, whatever, it's up to you which rack. You can use these two bottom racks or this middle rack doesn't really work. This one here doesn't because that was where the uh, spit goes for the rotisserie, okay? So if you are doing two sheets, two pans at one time, we do recommend when you set that timer, it beeps halfway through, we do recommend you trading the sheets, switching spots, it's time and even depending upon also how brown you want everything turning your food over so I'm going to do burgers for dinner tonight and I love burgers and steaks in this I never thought in a million years I would but all I'm going to do is take my hamburger patties seasoned put them on here I'm going to set them for about 10 minutes because I like mine a little thick and then in five minutes I'm going to flip them over and that's it the grease will drip into here I'll use my other little tray to catch the excess so I can try to keep this as clean as possible. And uh, other than that, I think that's about all I wanted to share with you with the air fryer. But I'll tell you what, while we're doing this, let's go a little bit further and I will show you how to put the rotisserie basket in, okay? Same way with the spit or with, so you have the rotisserie basket. We also have the kebabs, I love the kebabs. And we also have the spit. It's like if you're gonna put a whole roast or a chicken in here, a whole chicken, and you put them all in there the same way. But I'll show you the, with the basket. Okay, a little bit about the basket. It does open up. You wanna flip that open. A good way when this food is hot and you're bringing it out, this, is the removal tool. This is a good way to open the basket. You go from this angle, you just put that in there, kind of flip it open, and it opens it up, okay? I do recommend good oven mitts. And of course, we have the ones that we have. This is the older model. Now they come in gray, but they're silicone. And I love these things, because I can just reach right in grab my basket, I don't have to worry about burning myself. So a little tip on putting, I love to do um, Brussels sprouts in here, potatoes, sausages, just all kinds of different things you can do in the basket. Okay, you can even do popcorn in here. So this is the, it's called the removal tool, but I call it the stick it in there tool too. So I'm going to open and close that so we have the light. If you can see, there is a little hole here on the left side that I'm going to, actually I'm going to see it at the end over on the right side first. There's just a little slot and then over here is a hole. So these little things go in there. There is no right way or wrong way. You don't have to worry about that. But you do set this on, see I've got it on that little tool. It's spinning freely. So when I go in, I'm going to put it on the right side first and get it laying in that little slot. I'm trying to do this without getting in your way. When I'm doing it head on, I don't have any problems. So I, of course I am now because I'm trying to show you. So you put that little slot in first and then this goes in and you kind of take it to the right. Okay, I've got it in there. If it doesn't turn, you've got it in right. If it spins, it's not in there right. Same way with the rotisserie, same way 
with the uh, straight spit that you're going to put your chickens on or your roast. And then you just turn that on. We'll put it on rotisserie. And I'm just going to get it started so you can kind of see. And you can't really see it in there because the light is not on. Let me see if I can get the light to come on. Now it's kind of dark, but that basket is, there we go. So let's see if you can see how the basket is rotating. It is. And so that makes it easier to do. So now the food's cooked, we're ready to get it out. Use that same removal tool, go in on both sides lift up and out and there you go all right if you have any questions just let me know i'm here to help you okay thanks a lot